Today, uh, I want to go over effectively how to do market research in a way where you can gain value and learn from competitors as well as effectively know whether your offer is good or not. Um, there's two ways to go about this. Um, so first of all, I'm going to show you how to understand what your competitors are built, uh, effectively what technology they use. Um, as well, after understanding what technology they use, it's then important to make sure that we have um, we have we understand what kind of offers they're putting out on the advertising platforms. So once you know the tech they use, and then you know the offers they're pumping out uh, via advertisements, you can kind of tweak your internal marketing campaigns and make sure that your campaigns are running more smoothly, if not tweaked for the competitor insight. Uh, if not, you can take a different angle, etc. So there's there's lots of ways to to make this process lucrative for you. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen here. Um, you guys should see my screen now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over is this uh, piece of tech here called Built With. Okay, so the website is builtwith.com. Now, this is for you to find the technology uh, associated with your competitor. So, for example, if you're going to search up like mortgage, uh, if you're going to search up, let's just say, in my, in, I'm a marketing agency, right? So, I'd search up like Toronto Marketing Agency. Um, see, you know, these are different people running ads right now, right? Trying to rank for that keyword. Uh, and then we have, you know, our local results right here. Um, yeah, and then you can see that there's a few other competitors. So theoretically, I can go to any of these. So for example, this one, brand and mortar, right? Not sure what they do. I've never heard of them before. I'm going to grab their link. Uh, could just be a company randomly investing in SEO. Grab their link. Um, uh, clear, the website looks like it's just broken actually a little bit. Um, but I'm going to grab their link and then go over to this website, builtwith.com. And then you just paste the link here for your competitor and click look up. It's going to tell me exactly every single thing, every piece of technology that's on this website, um, where it's built, what CMS is being used, you know, what kind of emails they have, whether they use G Suite or Microsoft. It's going to tell me, you know, what kind of fonts they use, we're going to, what kind of optimization tools they're using. So right out the gate, I could tell you that because they're using certain tools that they're actually a decent competitor. I can tell you that right out the gate. Like someone using Hotjar is someone who gets a lot of traffic on their website. Um, and Hotjar is effectively a software that allows you to understand how people are clicking and navigating your website so you can make further optimizations, right? So like if people are coming onto my website, let's just go to Hotjar, if people are coming onto my website and they're only scrolling 75% of the page. So I know exactly how many people are scrolling to that part of the page. I know where they're hovering their mouse. I know where they're clicking on the page. So if I know all that data and I have all those heat maps, click maps, and scroll maps, I'm able to actually go about making adjustments to my site. So that way I can make that user interface and that user experience a little bit more uh, converting, right? So you want it to convert at a higher rate, uh, in which case you're going to change the layout of your site, change the load speed, change a few things. And Hotjar is what effectively will get that done. So Hotjar is something that uh, <clears throat> it's a tool that lets you uh, um, look at how people are navigating your site. Um, you know, you have a heat, here's an example. So here's the heat maps. So you can see like it gives you a heat map and you can see exactly where people are scrolling, scroll maps, heat maps, click maps. And then you can kind of adjust, right, accordingly, right? So it gives you some data around that. So the fact that they're using Hotjar right out the gate um, the fact that they're using Hotjar shows that they actually are a uh, decent competitor that has a lot of traffic. Google Analytics, that's good. Facebook Pixel, this is great. That means that they use Facebook ads. They actually run Facebook ads. Uh, Facebook Signal, this is great. This is like usage, usage stats. It's a great tool. Uh, they're using GTM, um, Google Tag Manager. They're doing Facebook conversion tracking. So actually running some ads. Um, Gravity Forms is what they're using for their forms, right? Um, they have a uh, log me in usage statistics for, you know, LinkedIn attribution, uh, Jetpack, um, that's another tool, uh, Gravatar profile, site link search box. There's a lot of the in here, WordPress, you can tell their website's built in WordPress. Uh, so ultimately the amount of tech that we know um, that they are using is all in here. So for payments, they do euros, yen, pound and American Express. They use Vimeo for video hosting. 
Um, they have, uh, they're part of the Facebook developers. They use the Facebook SDK. So you could tell that these guys actually have the tech um, that, you know, a standard agency should have, right? If they're actually running these kinds of like campaigns and, you know, really, really doing this kind of stuff. Um, Microsoft Azure, right? So uh, Office 365, that's what they're using for their emails. GoDaddy is what they're using for their domain, right? So you can kind of see, you can, you can, first of all, notice opportunities here. So like, for example, if I see that they're using Hotjar and I've never used Hotjar, great. Let me look at what Hotjar does, right? So I can now figure out, because if my competitor is using Hotjar, then what am I missing out on the table here, right? What am I missing out on the table here? What can I do what can I learn from just running this search here in builtwith.com to figure out exactly what additional tools might be driving value for my competitor, but not currently driving value for me, right? Um, and we can even, uh, you know, go back to that um, and see here that we have like, there's so many other competitors that you can do this with and find lots of opportunities. And when I say opportunities, I mean, uh, quite literally finding, you um, the new tools that you're not currently leveraging that like people in your niche might be leveraging, right? And this isn't just like agencies. This is also like, you could be searching up mortgage agents, you can be searching up anything. So this is another one that looks a bit underwhelming. So I'm going to go over to build with, paste the link to the new competitor and click look up. And you can see here that they have CAPTCHA, Cloudflare. So there's a few things that they're using in here, not as many as the first one. So the first one would have been a great one, but you can still find the, the different links and different software tech that's being used by these competitors. And then you decide if you want to go ahead and uh, either copy some of the softwares, either look at some of the softwares and or you know uh, remove some of your existing softwares. But there's also like technology profile, detailed technology profiles. You can see more. Uh, they're using SendGrid for their emails, which is crazy. So you can see exactly what email providers they're using. Um, and this is all under the free account of uh, builtwith.com. Imagine what you get with a paid account. Um, you get their metadata. Um, this is with the paid account, obviously. So now you can see the exact things that they're putting in for SEO purposes to rank them higher. So you'll see the exact wording, the exact descriptions, the exact titles they have on their pages. Uh, you'll see that all from here. Um, relationship profile. Um, you know, let's just do the CAPTCHA. So you'll be able to see their relationship profile. Um, and these are all the connected websites like referring domains and, you know, basically the, the biggest relationships they have from a Google ranking standpoint. So you'd be able to reach out to these different relationships and say, hey, like, I know you have a relationship with this guy, but hey, may, maybe I could pay you to, to build a relationship with us. Or maybe we can work out a relationship together if it's mutually beneficial and there's no payment involved, blah, blah, blah. So this way you can identify their, their what relationships they have, what referring domains they have. Um, and these are their redirects. So um not that important. Uh, company profile, let's see what's in here. Uh, not that important. This is all estimations. They estimate traffic. It's not actually legit. But basically, their, their, their best two tools here are the technology profile and the metadata profile. You could scrape all the different um, information around SEO and then all the tech information. That'll give you insight as to what you need to be doing um, to not only know what tools you need, as well as, you know, what tools your competitors are using. And then once you figure that out, you can decide if you want to invest in those tools, right? Um, but let's just say you didn't or you did, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. The next step is to effectively determine what are they running in terms of what kind of offers are they running? That's key as well, because now that I know your tech, that's great. I could potentially replicate it. I could, I could potentially set up similar tech for myself. Um, but ultimately, you know, I need to, I need to see what kind of offers they're pumping out. So what we can do is go to what's called meta. It used to be called Facebook ad library. Now it's called meta ad library because they rebranded effectively. What you want to do is go to this, uh, just go to Google. Let's just, I'll show you how I arrived at the page. Just go to Google type in Facebook ad library. Okay. And this is going to pull you up to a position right here. The first thing in the, in not the, this is just um, an ad. So you're going to click on the first one there. It's going to take you here. Meta ad library. Okay. We are going to go all countries, not just Canada. And we are also going to go all ads. And then we can search anything we want. We can search an advertiser. So let me see if that previous advertiser it wasn't this guy. It was the last guy. Let me see if they have, uh, let me see if they have uh, some kind of uh, 
Okay, let's see if they have some kind of offers running right now. Brandon Mortar was the name. Let's see if they have any ads. Because we saw that they had their Facebook pixel, right? So anytime you see a Facebook pixel and built it, built with, that means these guys are running ads. It's likelier, it's more likely that they're running ads, right? So I'm gonna grab their URL. I'm gonna go to the meta ad library and I'm going to search their name. Let's see what we can find. Okay, we can't find anything for that. So let's see if we can find their Facebook page, brand and mortar. Okay, we found their advertising agency page. Here it is. And currently, they're not running a single ad. Currently, I want to find one that actually goes through because once you actually find one, you're able to, here, let's look at one of the guys advertising up here. Okay, so these guys, uh, RakutenAdvertising.com. Here we go, Rakuten Advertising. Here we go. Okay, so I found one of them in, uh, in Google that actually has some ads here. I'll show you an example of one that's more in depth. Um, for agencies, sometimes it can get a little harder to find. Um, so they, they take down ads, they run ads, they run campaigns, right? So um, this is an example of what they're running. And Rakuten, from my understanding, they're, they're actually a platform where you can run some social ads on them. Um, so that's not necessarily the best comparable that we'd want here. Let's just go to mortgages for now. Um, Cause I know we have some options here. So let's just say, Canadian Mortgage Housing Corporation. Okay, so here's an example. This is what it should look like, okay? Let's just say you go through the motions of looking through all these competitors um, and finding their ads. This is effectively how much they spent. You can actually see how much they spent um, about social issues, elections, and politics, blah, 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 uh, in that category. And, and then as well, you could see the actual ads themselves. So this gives you an idea of what kind of offers these people are running. So for example, uh, the C Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, they're saying help reduce material transport costs and, and remote Northern regions, 80 million is available to bring um, your idea to life, help close the housing divide, 80 million available to bring your house to life, submit your idea now. This is more or less like some kind of like business loans I'm seeing, help improve uh, air and sea lift capacity to remote um, supply chain. This is more like effectively, you'd be able to see their ads there. Let's see what else we got, Dominion. Let's see if Dominion Lending Centers is running anything. Dominion Lending. Let's see this one. Okay, so here's Dominion Lending's ads. So they have a couple ads that they're running. Um, not happy with your current mortgage, we can help. Time is money. We can help you save both. Getting you approved is what we do, right? So they're running a couple of ads. You can see some of the videos oh, are running too. Was filled with um, you can see the exact like copy they're running. So I wouldn't classify any of this as like high quality advertising, um, just because it's not as good as it could be. Um, but ultimately, you can see what platforms they're running it on. So running on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, this is in the housing category, so you can see what category they're selecting. Um, and you can see the exact data started running. So like March 8th, for example. So they've clearly been running this one ad since March 8th. Today is what, the 10th. So in the last two, they launched this one two days ago. They launched this whole ad set two days ago, Dominion Lending. So you can see um, it, if they're still running this in a week from now, if they're still running this in two weeks from now, then obviously, you know, this is, this is making sense three weeks from now. Um, it's making sense for them, right? Um, let's just, uh, here's one guy, Tanner, this guy here, uh, I know he runs ads, so let's see what he's running. Here we go. This is, and this is how it needs to look. Okay. First of all, this is how your advertising should look when you're running ads yourself, you should have ads that look exactly like this uh, as well. Um, this is how many ads you should be seeing on a competitor that actually makes sense for you to like look at. You're not going to look at a competitor that has two ads like Dominion Lending, who it clearly doesn't look like they know what they're doing. Whereas these guys, they're running meme ads. Meme ads are very engaging. Okay. Not just meme ads, but video ads, right? Not just video ads, but like actual case study ads, right? Um, not just case study ads, but educational content ads, right? Learn how to make money with Facebook, for example, right? Um, you know, talking about case studies, better results, education, pumping out offers, building like 
uh, status delta. Status delta means, you know, you have more domain expertise in one area. So, you know, for example, this is how they do it. So you have, you have image ads, you have, uh, you have video ads, you have graphic ads, you have discount $7, like low ticket offer ads, right? So there's lots you can do. You guys can create, even if you're in the mortgage space, you can create a $7 ebook that people download for seven bucks um, on how to actually go about doing like, you know, like uh, HELOCs or reverse chip mortgages or whatever it is. And then the people downloading that, you just upsell them on your service. So ultimately, um, the more leads that come in, the more clients, right? You could see the actual copy end to end, the exact copy that is doing well. And this guy's been running this ad since yesterday. So I wouldn't look at these two too well, um, even though they're great ads. I'd like to look at some that started a bit earlier, right? So some that, you know, have been around for a couple of a little bit that he's still running because they're effective. As an example, February 8th, right? This one here is still running from February 8th. Um, and he has six ads that look exactly like this. And this ad set's been running since February 8th. What does that say? It says that it's a good ad set. It said, it's, said that it actually works, right? Now, if we can look for, look, February 24th, excuse me, February 24th, we have uh, we have other ones that are a little bit older february 10th now we're getting a little bit older um january 24th this one clearly works as well so that's what your goal is your goal is to look at competition figure out exactly what advertisements this is this one's actually probably one of his best because he's been running this one since october 21st 2021 it's about four or five months old this one ad uh so it's still running right now um that should show some merit as to you know how well this is doing for him and and you can kind of look at that right and so what you would do is you could actually use a tool there's a tool to make this whole process easier where you can actually save these ads you see how you can copy add link you could actually go in the dots here copy add link um, but there's a tool that's actually a little bit better at categorizing your facebook ad library workflow okay it's called addison.io i believe let's look it up here Okay, so here it is. Uh, it's a great tool. I'm just going to start a trial real quick. Um, effectively, what it allows you to do is categorize the ads according to how it should be. So hold on one second. Okay, so just give me one minute. I'm going to create a quick account for you guys to see this. This is, uh, is going to help you with your workflow a little bit. Okay, it's already being used by another account. So let me log in actually just instead. Okay, log in Google. Okay. Okay, so we're in the tool. Okay, now this tool allows you to save ads and then create boards as well. So you can have a board for each project. Let's just say you're working on, I don't know, 10 projects. You create a board for each project and then you can load ads into those boards uh, directly from the meta ad library, right? So let's, let's do like a little test, right? You click save ads. Now we have to create a board, obviously. I don't have any boards, so let's, let's do that real quick. Boards, let's create a new board. Let's call it test board um test description okay here's my board let's go to library now add new ad choose the board i just created now i'm going to go over to meta ad library and go like this and copy the link of the ads that i thought were cool paste them in here so let's look at a few more so let's go to some of the older ones because those ones were obviously like successful for him um so may 5th 2021 this one's been running for over a year like almost a year now so this is a great one let's grab this one save it in here let's grab august 18th 2021 let's grab this one it's been, it's been running for a year and it's still active um must be getting good results and let's take maybe some of the newer ones as well so this one says stop buying h um february 3rd 2022 a little bit newer but let's save these okay and then you go save ads now what's happening is, is it's actually importing them all into the queue um, and you'll be able to actually save them and never ever lose them. Cause here's the risk you're running. If he stops running these ads, like for one second, if he stops running this ad, what's gonna happen is you're never gonna be able to find it again. You'll never be able to find this ad again unless you saved it into Addison, okay? And that's why we like to use Addison because it's a really, really good tool. I'm gonna put the link below uh, in the description. 
Um, so you can go ahead and click that link and then you'll be able to actually go ahead and use this tool. But effectively, you know, they've done it right. Uh, it's a simple tool that makes the process easier. So if I go to my boards now and I go to my, so only two have been loaded in, the other two are queuing still. But let me view the ads. These ads are never going anywhere. And I can click to view them at their fullest extent. Here's the copy saved for me. Here's the, you know, the creative, whether it's a video, whether it's an image, and I can download it directly right off the tool. You can't download the creative right off this tool, off the meta library, but you can download the creative right out of um, Addison. So that allows you to download it, look at it, make sure it's solid, you know, replicate it, you know, make your own tweak on it, whatever you want to do. And you can actually see here as well, how many likes and how much engagement it's getting in there from the ad. You can share it with an Addison link now, as opposed to a Facebook ad library link. Um, and once again, you're no longer running the risk of that ad ever going away. Once you see winning ads and you actually do some quality, quality research and you figure out exactly what ads are the best, you want to save them all. And you want to make sure they don't go anywhere forever. And you can create a new board. Like for example, let's just say you created a board. Let's go create a board and call it, let's call this board, uh, let's just say I'm a mortgage agent and I'm doing, let's just say refinancing. Right? So you can have a refinancing board and then all the ads associated with refinancing will live on this board, right? You can have another board and create another board and call it new mortgages. Right. So all the um, ads related to new mortgages and getting new mortgages in the door can now be in the new mortgages board. You see what I mean? So now you're kind of categorizing all of your stuff. And same thing with agencies and create a new board and call it. I like all these SEO ads. Right. So SEO ads. I want to I want to categorize some SEO ads. I want to know how those are doing. I might even want to do some Facebook advertising ads. Right. Like how are people getting to others regarding Facebook ads? Right. And so I could build as many of these little uh, boards here that I want to categorize my workflow and keep all my ads in the system and they will never, ever go away. I can also transfer them to different boards if I want. So the tool is simple, but highly effective, okay, is the point. And you can also use their Chrome extension so that you can just do all this right from Facebook ad library without having to load up the tool. Um, so very, very high quality stuff. I hope that, uh, you know, you guys do use, uh, not only built with over here to figure out the tech that you're missing out on with your competition, but I also hope that you're going to be using the meta ad library to figure out exactly what offers, what creatives, what copies are being pumped out, uh, and then effectively categorizing them using this tool, Addison, which I put the link in the description below. Uh, you'll be able to effectively never lose those creatives and those ads that you feel will have performed the best and you can run those tests. Like no one's asking you to reinvent the wheel here. You know, a lot of people are already running successful ads. So how can you penetrate? How can you see exactly what's being run and how can you duplicate it? If not create your own take on it, that will effectively lead to your ads coming, doing well, right. You know, getting a good cost per lead, getting, you know, good, you know, cost per booked appointment uh, or whatever it is. Right. So the idea is that, use these tools at your disposal. Um, you know, the pricing for Addison is not crazy. Uh, it starts at $29 a month um, and you can get unlimited as saved ads, unlimited folders. You get note, you can embed it with Notion, which is a great project management tool. Um, it's, it's all you need. Like it's a little bit, you know, it's not crazy, but it's, it, it does allow you to uh, really, really save a lot of stuff and make this whole workflow a lot easier. So without further ado, um, you know, thanks for watching. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope you have an amazing day. Now, you can now actually go ahead and if you have any questions, let's open that up now for any questions associated with market research, right? Let's just, let's just focus these questions on, and what we're talking about today on market research. How are we going to research competitors? How are we going to research customers? Okay, so if there's no questions, we can end the call. But obviously, I want to open up the floor here. Let's, uh, let's open up the floor here and see if we have any questions. Okay, so if you do have questions, throw them in the chat. Uh, if you don't, give me a thumbs up and let me know that that was valuable. Uh, and then we can, uh, we can go from there. Nice. Okay, so I'm seeing a hand raised there. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it regarding the session for today on just basically market research. So you got to understand what your, what your stuff's built with. 
And then once you understand what it's built with, you can not only navigate new tools competitors are using, um, but you can also run the meta ad library to figure out the exact offers they're pumping out. And that should give you enough insight to, to not only build your foundation of software better and utilize tools that are pretty robust, but also effectively run the similar offers that are already converting well, that are already doing a fantastic job. Okay, so this kind of takes away a little bit of guessing out the process and I will upload this later so you guys will have a copy of this later don't worry. Um, any questions let's go uh, going once going twice.